Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning friends, we are continuing our discussion on dynamic stability and in this phase we are talking about longitudinal dynamic stability and you recall that we developed equation, characteristic equation of the form A is 4 plus B S cube plus C S square plus D S plus E equal to 0 and we know this a, B, C, D, E, this coefficient can be evaluated once I know the aerodynamic characteristics, inertia characteristics of the airplane using the expressions which you know how to find it out. We will now try to visualize this through the example which I was discussing yesterday. Let us for a business jet airplane, let the values of A, B, C, D are like this, which I have given you yesterday 67.9, B equal to 1371, C equal to 5459, D as 86.30 and E as 44.78. To quickly check whether this longitudinal dynamics has all the stable roots or not. Before we know, know before we try to uh, get that understanding, uh, we must also understand ki because of S4 here, uh, we expect four roots, right. And the conditions which are Rouse criteria, Rouse criteria, I repeat again, there will be one session where my TA will be talking more about Rouse criteria from implementation point of view, right. But we know that what we have been using is A, B, C, D, E, they should be greater than 0 and D into B, C minus A, D minus B square E greater than 0. If these two conditions are satisfied, then I understand this longitudinal dynamics has got all the uh, stable roots. Just to complete the discussion here, if E becomes less than 0, this will only give you an indication or it will suggest that one of the real roots only, only one real root is positive that is the change from negative to positive. So, it is suggesting divergence in time domain. And then if the second condition, if this becomes less than 0, this will suggest the one real root of complex pair, complex pair will be positive. So, this will lead to oscillatory divergence. So, it will oscillate and the amplitude will go on increasing if the second condition is not satisfied. All this detail you will see once you do numerical problems which I have told my TA to uh, do it for you. Right. Now, we will try to uh, use these values which is generally, which are generally a representative value for business jet type of aircraft and you will find that this A s 4 plus B s cube plus 
c square plus d s plus c when you try to solve it by numerical methods you will get two pairs of complex road. Okay, this is generally you will find this right and for this case if I write the lambda 1 2 is let us say n 1 2 plus j w 1 2 plus minus complex conjugate and lambda 3 4 I write n 3 comma 4 plus minus j w 3 comma 4. And for this case, the result shows this. This is minus 1.008 plus minus 2.651 j, and here it is minus 0 0.0069 plus minus 0 0.0905 j. This is typically you will find the trend will be like this, right. What is that unique if I try to see among these roots? In the first pair you see the real part is large and negative as compared to the second pair of roots. And the moment the real part of a complex conjugate is negative, we know it is, it is having a damping and large negative means it will be damped very fast. And once they are, they are complex conjugate, I know there will be oscillation. So, co complex conjugate with real part negative means it will oscillate and damn very fast. Similar thing if this was positive, again it is a, again it is a complex conjugate. Let us say instead of minus 1.08, suppose it was plus 1.008 plus minus 2.65 j, because it is a complex conjugate. It, it has oscillatory nature that we know. However, since real part is positive for this example case, it will be divergent oscillation. So, it will go on doing like this and the amplitude will go on increasing right like this. So, divergent in oscillation, but as long as the real part is negative, it is a damped oscillation. What is indirectly also you are getting see that this quartic S4 equation we can for all convenient for this type of aircraft I can write it as product of two second order uh, equations like characteristic equation that is S square plus 2 zeta 1 2 into omega 1 2 S plus omega 1 2 square omega n 1 2 square plus s square plus 2 zeta 3 4 omega n here it is omega n zeta omega n omega n 3 comma 4 plus omega n 3 comma 4 square this is equal to 0. This is very very illustrative of some physical meaning of this equation. What does it say? It says I can approximate, I can break, represent this equation by product of two second order equations. And now if I see these values of one large negative and one small negative, I can always think go back and try to understand how does an airplane behave when disturbances are given in longitudinal mode. So, one will be short period mode and another will be long period mode. You could quickly check from this, since this pair of root has got large negative value compared to this pair. So, this root will correspond to short period mode. 
and this will correspond to long period mode. No problem, because real part is very small compared to the other pair of roads. Right. Now, if I try to build the physics via this understanding through the example, I know the airplane in longitudinal mode, if there is a disturbance given, it can just get excited like this and come back to equilibrium in a very short time. So, I say short period mode, this is this one and second thing, second one it could be it goes like this long period and then it comes to the equilibrium. And it is also seen which you can also justify as per a short period mode is concerned, mode is concerned, the time is so short, right? It is fair enough to approximate u is constant. That is, time is so short that you can always neglect change in the u. So, u is constant. That means, when I say u is constant, that no change in velocity or the speed, that means small u, we are talking about 0. Perturbation in u is 0. That is, time is so short that it comes back to equilibrium, but there are hardly any change in the perturbed u. So, as far as we understand, there is, there is hardly any change in the velocity u. So, perturbed u is 0. Okay. So, this is an approximation. This is approximation. For long period mode, we will see that we will say alpha remain constant. Please understand this is not a very good approximation or in a sense we are telling the perturbed alpha is 0. So, for a short period mode the u remain constant. So, perturbed u is 0 for a long period mode the alpha remain constant. So, perturbed alpha is 0. Say for a short period if I try to visualize it is something like this very disturbance immediately it comes like this. For a fugoid mode it is something like this. And the airplane you see the it always goes like this. This is a, an approximation which is not very very accurate but we understand it is not a very good approximation, but fair enough to get some initial understanding from design aspects. right? Okay. So, now since we are always discussing we need some neat expression which I can readily use for designing an aircraft, we will see how this approximation short period approximation and fugard approximation is going to help us to get some feel for some design numbers. So, that will be our now attempt. So, we are talking about short period approximation. What we said? Perturbed u is 0. That means, this dynamics, this, this dynamics is more governed by theta and alpha, right? Alpha is changing, theta is changing. Let us do this short period approximation. We have written the general equation for longitudinal dynamics, which was developed using perturbed equation of motion. Now, for short period, we know u does not change, does not change that is u is so small u is 0. So, this u which is perturbed is superfluous because this is automatically taken care. So, we are more concerned about alpha of s and theta of s. 
right short period. So, no change in u, but change in theta, change in alpha. So, we will retain those two equations and then one, once we do that, we can simplify this as s u 1 minus z alpha then minus u 1 s minus m alpha dot s. Let me write this, I will explain and then s square minus m q s this then this is alpha of s by delta e of s theta of s by delta e of s equal to z delta e m delta e. Of course, we will be assuming z alpha dot equal to z q is equal to theta 1 equal to m t alpha etcetera to be identically 0. Let us see how does it come. So, now we are simplifying or make using the approximation that u does not change or perturbed u is 0, we are more bothered about alpha s and theta of s. So, we are dropping this to the row, this rows and column. So, we are only left with this which is written here for simple case where I am assuming z q 0, theta 1 0, z alpha dot 0. right? And you could see what is this first equation? This into u plus x alpha into this plus g cos theta into this equal to x delta e. But we are assuming there is no change in u, but w is 0. So, that equation becomes superfluous. Now, similarly you see, if I come here z u into u plus z alpha as this term into this, or this term into this becomes z delta e. Similarly, m u into u plus this into this plus this into this becomes m delta e. So, what we have dropped? We have dropped first equation and also this one I have dropped because this is with u, z u into u, m u into u. So, those has been have been dropped. So, we are only having this which is here. Clear? So, you could please understand these are approximations and the approximation is u does not change, total u does not change. So, perturbed u is 0 and the u equation is automatically taken here. So, I am dropping that. So, we are only talking about alpha and theta and accordingly this is simplified for a case where z alpha dot z q theta 1 m alpha m alpha dot what will be, will be m t alpha not m alpha m t alpha equal to 0. If I put m alpha equal to 0 you understand it becomes statically neutrally stable. So, it is m t alpha please correct that. Okay. So, now so what happens? So, we get if I take the determinant of it and try to solve it then I get alpha s by delta e of s will be equal let me write this z delta e into s plus m delta e into u 1 minus m q into z delta e. This is divided by u 1 into s square minus m q plus z alpha by u 1 plus m alpha dot into s plus z alpha m q by u 1 minus m alpha dot. You know how to find this expression. You have to simply apply Kramer's rule and you get alpha s by delta e of s like this. Similarly, I get theta of s by delta e of s as let me write this uh, u 1 m delta e plus z delta e m alpha dot s plus m alpha z delta e minus z alpha m delta e divided by 
S and then same term u 1 into x square minus m q plus z alpha by u 1 plus m alpha dot s plus z alpha m q by u 1 minus m alpha dot. What is this alpha s by delta e of s or theta s of delta e of s? These are called transfer function, very, very important transfer function. So, directly this telling if I know delta e of s and if I know all this derivative, I can find alpha of s, correct. And once I know alpha of s, I can take a inverse and get the alpha in time domain. Those part I am not talking about, but here this is very, very important this transfer function that is output to input. That is, if I have a transfer function here and I give a input delta E of s and if I operate this transfer function, it will give me alpha of s. This is extremely important you will find when you will be design, designing controller or also for stability augmentation system. right? Okay, this is fine. And now let us have a closer look into this. Why we are doing all this? Why we are tolerating all these big, big expressions? As I have told you earlier, this we have to do only once. Once you do it, understand it, forget it, then use it as a reference. If you see the denominator for alpha s by delta e of s and denominator of theta s and delta e of s, you find this whole term is here from here to here, but this is additional s here. Right? Now, when I talk about characteristic equation, you know by now this denominator should be equal to 0, that is x square minus m q plus z alpha by u 1 plus m alpha dot s plus z alpha m q by u 1 minus m alpha dot equal to 0. This becomes the characteristic equation for alpha s by delta e of s. But when I come to theta s by delta e of s, I get in addition x equal to 0 and that is same equation. Right? You could see from here. So, what is this s equal to 0? Please understand, we are writing transfer function of theta s, theta is the pitch angle. As far as stability is concerned, there is a neutral stability in terms of theta, that is the airplane flies like this, flies like this, fly like this, aerodynamically they are identical, they are or you can say neutral, right? it does not change as far as theta is concerned, because you may ask one thing, what about the moment? It does not change whether theta is 0 like this, like this or like this. Right? As far as aerodynamics is concerned, whether I am moving like this, I am moving like this, I am moving like this, it all depends upon the relative air speed. Right? Relative air, as long as relative air speeds, they are same, they are identical. So, it does not distinguish between theta 0 or theta 10 degrees, theta 50 degrees in normal case. right? As far as gravity is concerned, what comes to our mind always that if, I, if theta is like this, another theta is something like this, what about gravity? But we know that all these moments are about center of gravity. Right? So, and weight passes through the center of gravity, so it does not make any change. Aerodynamics does not make any change because it depends upon the relative air speed. So, theta 0 or theta 15 degree or theta 30 degree as long as relative air is same, it is aerodynamically identical. And since weight passes through C g, it does not matter. Right? So, that is why S equal to 0 corresponds to neutral stability in terms of theta and with this, this understanding, right? this should be clear. That cannot be extended for alpha and that is why there are no S 
equal to 0 in this case because with alpha things will change. So, so we will once we understand that so we will delete it and we will work with this equation. Now you see you are already expert I have to compare this with s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square equal to 0, but I know now I am talking about short period approximation. So, I write s square plus 2 zeta short period omega n short period s plus omega n short period square equal to 0. This becomes my characteristic equation and now I compare this with this and to find out the expression for omega n short period by approximation. Let us see what do we get. If we do this comparison you will get omega n short period equal to z alpha m q by u 1 minus m alpha and zeta short period you will get as minus m q plus z alpha by u 1 plus m alpha dot divided by 2 omega n short period. This should not be very difficult for you 2 zeta short period omega n short period should be equal to this term m q plus z alpha by u 1 plus m alpha dot and omega n short period square will be total this term right. So, that is how this thing have come this should not be m alpha dot this should be m alpha sorry. Yeah, I would like to draw attention here this characteristic equation s square minus m q plus z alpha by u 1 plus m alpha dot s plus z alpha m q by u 1 minus m alpha not m alpha dot right. So, that was wrongly written earlier I tried to correct it and now if I compare this we get an expression omega n short period like this and zeta short period is like this and if we put all those exact numbers which we have used to solve a s 4 plus b s q plus c s square plus d s plus e equal to 0. If I put those aerodynamic characteristics inertia characteristics then we get this as 2.8 5 0 radian per second and this we get around point three five one, and if you recall the exact values exact values were 2.836 radian per second and zeta was 0.355 and if I compare omega n short period which I have developed through approximation then I find the omega n and zeta are fairly close right. So, it is general trend for most of the cases we find this approximation as far as short period is concerned is a very good approximation right. This is another thing you try to understand. If, if z alpha m q by u 1 is less than very less than compared to m alpha, then I can neglect this term right. Then what will happen? Then omega n short period will become under root of minus m alpha and what is this expression? If you recall this we obtained for pure pitch ok. This approximation how realistic it is you could see that it is divided by u 1 it is a large number right. So, mostly you will find this is not a bad approximation. So, for a designer what he does designer if he decides the natural frequency for short period will be of particular order say 3 radians per second or 4 radians per second. He can immediately check what should be the static margin. How does he get that idea? Because m alpha is nothing but half rho v square s c m alpha by i y y right ok. And static margin is linked with c m alpha this is dynamic pressure. So, the designer knows that what altitude he is going to fly primarily. He has a rough idea about 
order of moment of inertia for same class of airplane. So, you can easily decide what sort of uh, static margin you can design for or if you are designing for a particular static margin then what sort of natural frequency short period you will get. Right. Same understanding you can use it for finding damping ratio as well. Okay. So, this is the beauty of this approximation and before I complete this short period part please also understand that as far as longitudinal dynamics is concerned the short period approximation is a fairly good approximation and you will see a similar approximation may not hold true for fugoid type of approximation right. I repeat again please check this here it should be m alpha not m alpha dot. Okay. One request I have got to all of you that since we are writing so many expression do not get demotivated. Okay. You should do it yourself this it does not require a huge knowledge of mathematics. Do it yourself once you have to do once and try to understand the physics of this expression. Which I am trying to uh, stress when I am comparing pure pitch to exact and to the approximate values. These are extremely important you will realize soon for from the handling qualities of the pilot right this omega n zeta they separately as well as the together they place huge role in making the, our pilot in command very very comfortable. That is why you need to understand if I want to tweak omega n short period what is the minimum thing I will change right from this expression from this expression and finally validate that through exact solution. Okay. That is why we are giving so much of time in doing all this analysis to understand few important parameters. So, that finally, we can make the pilot comfortable because dynamic stability talks about the transient and the pilot is the person the passengers are the person who will experience this transient. So, we have to make them comfortable we can make them comfortable through correctly choosing the value of omega n zeta or their combination. Okay. Thank you very much.